How's it going guys? What I wanted to do in this video is actually talk to you all a little bit about a uh, plate frame for cooling. Uh, this is a graphic representation of one of the chill water systems that we have on a data center that uh, requires chilled water availability year-round. Even in the winter months, this is an area that we cannot necessarily cool with outside air, so we have to use another way of uh, providing chilled water for that. Uh, of course, there is enough load on the system that for the most part uh, we would be able to maintain a chiller uh, however, it is very inefficient to run a chiller year-round, especially when you can take a few steps to conserve energy by using a plate frame system. Now, for those of you guys who may not be aware, what we are doing in the plate frame system is once outside air reaches uh, falls below a particular set point which currently in this system we're running at around 50 once outside air temperature falls below that 50 degree mark uh, what it will actually do is shut down the chiller and actually use the cool outside air temperature to cool the water uh, using the heat exchanger and of course we've got the heat exchanger here you can see where the mouse is hovering over uh, this device here. This is the heat exchanger for this system. And once we open the isolation valves for the plate frame system, uh, we will close those valves for the chiller. And then, of course, the condenser water loop will flow chilled water, or I should say condenser water, cooled condenser water, through one side of the heat exchanger. And then, of course, the chilled water uh, will flow through the other. Uh, and of course this system is very efficient when uh, we get to the cooler temperatures outside we're basically just running fans and pumps uh, and as many of you guys are aware a chiller can be a very expensive piece of equipment to run especially long term uh, but they do have their purposes and if you can see here we have currently uh, just one cooling uh, fan running one can uh, tower fan running and it is providing, uh, at the, this moment, we are using the chiller uh, that's just due to outside air. If we were to fall below the lockout temperature, then it would actually switch to the plate frame cooling. And uh, my mouse is being a little aggravated this morning for some reason. But you can see that we have plenty of water. Uh, we have our, uh, this is a very redundant system. You can see that there is, of course, two pumps, two primary pumps, two condenser pumps, as well as two chillers. This is a kind of critical area where we must maintain cooling availability at all times. And we have uh, tried to take steps to where if something does fail, we have a backup to be able to keep the system online. Now, a, uh, one thing that you need to make a note of is when the system does switch from plate frame to chiller, uh, there is a change in the condenser water set point. Uh, we do not necessarily need to run the condenser water as cold when we are running a chiller is what we would normally run it during plate frame. When we do switch the system over to run on plate frame the condenser water set point actually drops and basically the purpose of that is to try to drive as much cooling through this heat exchanger as possible uh, we will drop that water temperature set point down to 45 degrees and the milder temperatures we don't always get it but as those temperatures outside fall we do see a significant drop in the temperature coming through that heat exchanger of course we also have uh, our bypass valve but typically when we are on plate frame we're flowing 100 percent of the water over the towers and virtually none is being bypassed however when the chillers run uh, that story is just the opposite depending on the load that's on the machine it will modulate the bypass valve basically uh, recirculating the water back into the sump as you can see here this blue tank 
in order to keep it from getting too cold. Now, one thing you do not want to do on a chiller, as many of you all are aware, is getting that condenser water too cold. Some machines will actually trip and have other issues if you get that water too cold. But this is basically an overview of a plate frame chilled water system. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you're needing something that is a very redundant system, something like this is probably what you're going to want to go with, especially if you're looking at trying to save a little bit of energy during the cooler evenings and things like that. This plate frame system is something that does work very well. Uh, it, you should be aware that during the switchover period of this system from going back from the, ch uh, from the chiller to the plate frame, uh, of course, this system is isolated out. There's literally, there are valves that keep water from flowing through this. And that's done for a few reasons. One is, uh, you know, if you're run trying to run water through these the entire time, you're going to be fighting yourself. If you do not isolate out the condenser water when you're running that higher set point on one side of this heat exchanger and you don't isolate out this chilled water from this other side, you're basically going to be fighting yourself and reintroducing heat back into your chilled water, which is something you don't want to do in this type of a system. Uh, but uh, one thing that does happen even when you have it isolated out, there's water that is stagnant in these pipes. Uh, as well as in that heat exchanger. So one thing that we do see occasionally is when it first switches that it will elevate the primary chilled water supply temperature slightly. Uh, whatever the ambient temperature is, of course this is inside a mechanical room, so the warmer that mechanical room is, the warmer this water will become. And in there again, it is just a brief slug of uh, you know, water that goes in through there. And what you can do to help minimize that is, of course, just prior to the switch, is have your system to drop the condenser water temp set point, allowing that water to be cooler in the condenser loop so when these valves do open up, to start flowing water through the heat exchanger. It's actually already uh, gained you a little bit and it's got colder water going through one, high, one side of the heat exchanger than it normally would just as soon as that valve opens. But uh, there again, it's, it's not going to eliminate all of that warmer water, but it can help to minimize it. Uh, just be aware of that. If you have any type of alarming or anything like that on your system, it can flag an alarm. Uh, if you do not have some type of reporting delay or that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, in there again, it's nothing that actually affects the system. It's just it's something that, depending on your alarm, your reporting and stuff, and stuff like that of your alarms, it can flag a temporary alarm. In fact, this one would flag one for just a few minutes looking at some of the trends. It would go into alarm for just a very short period of time before returning to normal where that temperature has dropped. So that's something that we had to make, a change that we had to make within our system recently. This is a very robust system. This is just a basic overview of how a plate frame chilled water system works uh, in, in conjunction to provide a cool water supply year round. I mean, the system runs uh, in the middle of winter, the system will be running. The chillers, of course, will be down, but we will be running on plate frame using the cooler outside air to cool and provide chilled water for the system. But guys, this is just a brief overview. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos on my channel. Be sure to subscribe. Visit my website at systemcontroltech.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.